Valiant shares were one of the stocks today that were actually up after the company named Howard Schiller its interim CEO. What perspective on how the company has been handling the situation? We're off to Winnipeg to speak with National Bank Portfolio Manager Rob Tetro. Rob, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, Greg. So let's start there. Um, some uh, uncertainty, and investors hate uncertainty over the situation with Michael Pearson. And then we got an interim CEO this morning. The stocks were a little uh, undecided, and then it moved higher. Is all this action basically based on what we found out this morning about who's going to be running the company in the short term? I would think so, absolutely, Greg. What did it finish at? What did Valiant finish at? I'm getting powdered here in Winnipeg. And was it up 3%? Uh, with the Valiant shares, I believe, about 3%, yeah, to finish off the day. 3%. So obviously, uh, the, the management by committee approach was not something that was favored by the market. Uh, you've had a lot of talking heads on today. Very smart people went on your show today and said some smart things. Specifically, uh, the, the approach by committee wasn't one that the market liked. Now we have a name, a name who's been there for four years, who was by Pearson's side from 2011 to 2015. He was there. He was the CFO. He knows the company. And the fact that he's coming back, obviously, is a sign that the market liked today. And the fact that he's back in uh, the CEO, CEO role uh, is, is good for sure for the company, says the market. All right, we just showed our viewers a graph. It actually ended up about 2% on the day, but at a point it was trading around 3 So you think this will bring some stability to the name for at least a little while so we can figure out uh, what's going to happen with Mr. Pearson? I think so. The, the market certainly wants Mr. Pearson back to follow up on that Walgreens deal that he signed. And remember, he took this company from nothing to, to a very, very large player. So they want to see how are they operationally, how are they going to do this? How specifically are you going to implement that deal with Walgreens? Uh, Schiller is, is a great name and he, he knows the financial side of it. But operationally, I think the market will be even more relieved if, uh, if Pearson comes back. Big story in the BNN newsroom today was the fact that the loony at a new 12 and a half year low, taking us back to early summer of 2003. How is the value of our dollar affecting your investment strategy? That's a great question, Greg. Uh, for us specifically, uh, we were either smart or lucky, but we had a lot of our U.S. Uh, holdings unhedged. So we purchased a lot of, uh, we've been overweight U.S. for a while. We've been a believer in the U.S. cycle for a while. We've purchased a lot of holdings in USD, and uh, that has now been obviously a great move as we've made money both on the stocks and on the currency. So um, it's, the, the question now is, do you unhedge? When do you unhedge? And uh, that's going to be something that's going to weigh on our mind for sure here as we're approaching, if you can believe, it's 70 cents here on the U.S. dollar. When do you make that decision? How much of a time window do you have before you have to jump in either one camp or the other? Well, for us, it's not something we take lightly. It's something we take a look at all the macro factors. We take a look at what's happening. Obviously, we got a petrodollar, so we got to we got to factor in what's happening there. And and I'm certainly not a bottom picker because I do enough of that at home when I change the diapers for my three <laughs> kids. So this is not something that I want to specifically pick the bottom for. We just want to reduce risk. Our, our, our strategy, obviously, is to reduce risk. And if we can take one risk off the table, which is currency, well, then that might be a good move. So we're looking at it closely. It's something that we may decide to, to move on in the next week or two. It's been about eight years since I changed my last diaper at home, but you never forget the experience. I want to talk to you a bit about the trade deficit as well. The narrative we've been hearing from policymakers is don't worry so much. Eventually, the low loony will improve exports. Still a $2 billion trade deficit, but not as bad as we thought. Well, yeah, we, we thought the analysts, we thought we'd see a $2.6 billion deficit. Now, this is significant. This is the 14th significant month that we see negative numbers like this. And this is going to be the worst year, uh, worst year ever for the trade deficit. We're talking about probably somewhere around a 20 to $25 million trade deficit when all is said and done. Now, the good news, if, if you consider it good news, is that they revised the October uh, provision by about 0.4 of a billion and not only that but we had obviously more exports than we thought we would the Canadian dollar helped us on that side if you will uh, auto parts uh, auto manufacturers uh, ores as well as forestry those numbers all proved to be uh, more positive than the analysts had expected and as a result uh, the deficit is only and I say only obviously tongue-in-cheek here but it's only two billion dollars for the month of November now Rob it was another tough day on the markets only the third trade near the year nowhere to hide where are you putting your money well, right now, uh, we're being obviously very cautious. If we have cash, we're sitting on it for now. We will start considering to deploy it soon. But we have a couple names that we like to follow. Uh, specifically, when I come on here, I'm very proud Manitoban, and I always like to talk about some Manitoba companies. And today, I'm going to talk about uh, New Flyer. New Flyer is a company that we really liked for the past while. Now, obviously, less now that it's, it's run up significantly. It's in the high 20s now. But uh, for a couple reasons, we like it. One, for the first reason, CEO. CFO and at least one board member 
we're doing some insider buying. Now this is November into December, they're doing some insider buying and, and some significant amounts. So whenever I see that, obviously, uh, I like that. I mean, if the CEO believes in this company, I like it too, right? Uh, so that was one major reason. And two, the motor coach acquisition is something that I think is gonna be very accretive. We're talking uh, $455 million. They bought it at a six times multiple, six times a bit the multiple. Now that's a fantastic accretive deal in my mind. They did it without issuing equity. So there were no new, there was, there was no new, they did it all on a debt financing. And on top of that, the multiple that new flyers trading at now, they're gonna see some accretive help. This is a, motor coach is a, is a, a coach industry maker and new flyers making city buses. Between the two of them, there will be some accretive cost savings. And we figure, I figure somewhere around 10 million or so uh, per year just in cost savings. So I like new flyer. I liked it a lot more a, a month ago, uh, but today, uh, today and yesterday, it's, it's kind of closer to where we might get into that stock. But uh, I like the company. Plus, it pays a nice dividend. They just increased the dividend yield, so they got a 13% bump on the dividend. Nice little dividend yield, close to 3%, so everyone's happy with that. I like the company, and I like that it's a Manitoba story. It's nice to hear a bit of optimism on such a down day. Thanks for your time, Rob. Thanks, Greg. That was Rob Tetro, Portfolio Manager at National Bank.